Did you know there are chess strategies that could blow your mind? Chess, my friends, is not merely a game of shuffling pieces around a board. Oh no, it's a high-stakes duel of strategy and wit, akin to navigating the morning traffic while sipping piping hot coffee. Your chessboard is a battlefield, and every move is a crucial dance step in the ballet of victory. So buckle up, and prepare for a mind-blowing journey into the world of chess. Ever heard the phrase, location, location, location? Well, in the real estate of chess, the center of the board is the prime property. Just like the heart of a bustling city, the center of the chessboard is where the action happens. It's the Times Square of your chessboard, the Piccadilly Circus of your game strategy. Controlling the center gives your pieces greater mobility, like a well-placed taxi service ready to whisk your pieces off to any corner of the board. It also cramps your opponent's style. Think of it as throwing a grand party in the middle of the board, and your opponent wasn't invited. The four central squares are your chessboards downtown. Occupying them is like owning the hippest, most happening spots in town. So try to establish control early on. Place your pawns and knights in the center and let them rule the game. So remember, like the best piece of real estate, the center of the board is prime property. Did you know that your knight can visit every square once and only once? Yes, you heard it right. This mind-blowing strategy is called the Knight's Tour. Just imagine your knight embarks on a solo journey across the board, not repeating a single square, like a world tour without visiting the same country twice. Here's the catch though, it's not as simple as it sounds. The knight moves in an L shape, two squares forward and one square sideways. Therefore it requires careful planning and strategy. It's like solving a complex puzzle where every move matters. This strategy is not just about moving your knight aimlessly around the board, it's about understanding the power and potential of each piece, and using them to their maximum potential. So, it's not only about the knight's journey, it's about your journey as a player, mastering the art of chess. So next time give your knight a grand tour of the board. Think castling is just for kings? Think again. Now I know what you're thinking, how can I castle with a pawn or a knight? Well you can't, but that's not the point. The point is that every piece on your board should have its own metaphorical castle, a safe space where it can contribute to your game without being at constant risk. Castling, as we know, is a special move that involves the king and a rook. It's a fantastic way to ensure the safety of your king while simultaneously positioning your rook for potential action. But while we can't literally castle with other pieces, we can apply the same principle of creating safe, strategic positions for them. Imagine if your bishop had its own fortress, or your knight had a cozy little castle. Wouldn't they be more effective? So next time you play, remember to not only move, but also castle your pieces. Remember, in chess as in life, sometimes you need to castle to keep safe. Ever underestimated the power of a pawn? Well, you're not alone. In the grand scheme of chess, pawns often get overlooked. They're the smallest pieces on the board, the frontline foot soldiers, and let's be honest, they're not exactly the most glamorous. But just like the unassuming Clark Kent turns into Superman, these little guys can pack a major punch. Imagine this. Your opponent is all set for a checkmate, smirking behind their queen. But then, your brave little pawn steps forward, capturing an enemy piece and completely turning the tide. It's like David versus Goliath except in chess. And let's not forget about promotion. A pawn, the Cinderella of chess, reaches the other side of the board and transforms into any piece you wish. Yes, you heard it right. It can turn into a queen. Now how's that for a plot twist? So, never underestimate the little guy, he might just be your game changer. Who said sacrifices are for the faint-hearted? In chess, they're for the brave. Now let's talk about the art of sacrifice. In the grand theater of the chessboard sometimes, you have to let go of your beloved pieces. No, it's not betrayal, it's strategy. You might think, why would I give up my hard-earned pieces? Well, it's all about the bigger picture. Imagine you're in a dramatic movie. Your knight, let's call him Sir Galahad, nobly steps into the line of fire, diverting the enemy's attention. Meanwhile, your queen, the elegant and lethal Lady Guinevere, slips through unnoticed to deliver a devastating blow. It's the chess equivalent of a heroic movie sacrifice scene, minus the tear-jerking soundtrack and slow-motion effect. So don't be afraid to lose a soldier or two, or three, or even a queen. Because just like in life, chess is all about making tough decisions for the greater good. Remember, in chess, sometimes you have to lose a piece to win the game. Checkmate. The word that can either make your day or ruin it. It's like the final note in a symphony. The cherry on top of a sundae. The, well you get the point. It's the ultimate goal in any chess game. And achieving it can feel like winning the lottery. Minus the multi-million dollar prize, of course. 
Now what is a checkmate? In the most basic terms, it's trapping the king with no possible moves left. It's like cornering a mouse with nowhere to run. It's a thrilling moment, your heart pounding, adrenaline rushing as you watch your opponent's face fall. But here's the thing, not all checkmates are created equal. Some are straightforward, others are complex, requiring the cunning of a fox and the patience of a monk. So how do you get there? Well, by using every strategy we've discussed so far, and always being one step ahead. So, keep your eyes on the prize, that sweet, sweet checkmate. Ever tried planning your moves ahead? In chess, it's a must. Picture this, you're a general leading your army into battle. Would you charge head first without a plan? I think not. Chess is no different, it's a battle of minds, a war of strategies. It's all about seeing the big picture, predicting your opponent's moves, and preparing your pieces for the grand showdown. Think of it as your very own time machine. You're not just playing in the present, you're also playing in the future. Now don't get me wrong. You don't need to be a psychic or possess a magic crystal ball. It's more about understanding the game, knowing your pieces, and a dash of logical thinking. And here's a secret. Planning your moves isn't just about winning. It's also about learning, improving, and having fun. So don't be afraid to plan ahead. Remember, a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. In a hurry to win? Well, chess is a marathon, not a sprint. Now let's talk about the folly of rushing in chess. Picture this. You're in the middle of a game, your pulse is racing, and you're eager to make your move. You see an opportunity to take your opponent's queen and you seize it without a second thought. But alas, you've fallen into a trap, and your hasty decision has cost you the game. It's like eating a chocolate cake in one bite, only to find out it was filled with hot chili. Surprise, not the good kind. That's what rushing in chess gets you. It's a game of patience, strategy, and careful consideration. Each move is a delicate dance, a subtle negotiation. It's not about the fastest move, but the smartest move. Don't let the ticking clock or the smug expression of your opponent rush you. Chess is not a battle against time, but a battle of minds. So, slow down, take a breath, and make each move count. You've battled hard, and now it's the end game. Ready to bring it home? The end game in chess. A space where kings and pawns take center stage, where every move carries the weight of victory or defeat. It's like the final act of a great drama, where the remaining characters reveal their true power. Now imagine the endgame as a fancy dinner party. The king, previously a wallflower in the corner, now becomes the life of the party, moving across the board like a social butterfly. The pawns, once the underdogs, strive to cross the board, to be promoted to a higher piece like a waiter dreaming of becoming the head chef. The end game is also a test of your strategic thinking. It's like a complex puzzle, where you have to figure out the best way to use your remaining pieces to corner your opponent's king. The thrill, the tension, it's like playing a high-stakes game of hide-and-seek. But remember, in the end game, patience is key. It's not about who can make the quickest move, but who can make the smartest move. It's like a game of chess-themed poker, where you need to keep your cards close to your chest and wait for the right moment to strike. And that, dear viewers, is the beauty of chess. So, are you ready to blow some minds?